there is another way to represent a bus structure in ORCAD Capture and this is available from version 16.6 .6 onwards and it's called net group. Now net group is a lot more flexible than the bus structure because as you saw in our previous example you can only connect all of the points using a bus wire if you name the bus according to a particular way like uh, say for example there's a bunch of signals that relates to the same thing so for example in our case the AD0 to AD16 say for example then it's only the AD0 to AD uh, sorry rather AD0 to AD15 so that AD within box bracket 0 dot dot 15 that's the only thing that you can connect to the bus now say for example what if we had the need in which we had to logically group together different kinds of signals like bus signals as well as scalar signals in a single bus and take it from one page to the next. For example if we were to do address decoding then let's for say for example uh, we would need to have the uh, AD0 to AD15 then let's say we would need the ALE for sure but let's also include something like a IO slash MBAR and uh, read and write signals that we want to bunch together but that ALE IO slash MBAR read or write they are not buses they are scalar signals but we want to put all of these together on a bus in the normal case this is very difficult to do and rather it's not very intuitive and also at times and ORCAD really doesn't work. So we have something called a net group which can bring together uh, different sorts of inputs be it buses or scalars and group them together as something that's called a net group which is equivalent to a bus. So let's look at that by way of an example. So what we would do is we have a uh, logically related group of signals D0 to D3 this is much like the uh, AD0 to AD15 or if you represent it like a bus it's D within box bracket 0 dot dot 3 so we have those signals and we want to bunch with it these scalar signals the P clock clock ready OSC and reset take them as a single net group and take it as an a bidirectional net group in here and then on the output side we would have a single net group coming in and from that we would connect the various wires on this particular page so let's see how we can do that so let's first do it on the clock generation IC page so for that what we would need to do is uh, this see this it's called a place net group we click on this one what happens is it gives us if we have already created other net groups uh, for this particular design they will appear here so you can choose any one uh, so that's the immediate second advantage that you can uh, choose any net group and place it on the other pages also if required so if it is the first time that we are doing it what we would do is do a add net group and in there they ask us to give the name and another important thing about net group is that the name doesn't need to be of the format a particular label and then within box brackets the uh, extent given from zero to dot dot the last minus one value for the size of the bus so in here let's say the net group I'll just name it as 8284 output signals let us name the net group net group as that it can be whatever name that you prefer I hit the apply once I hit apply this thing gets created but now I need to add what signals or what combination of buses and scalars will go into this particular net group so I'll add it I remembered that there's a bus that I need to put on there that is D0 to 3 because there are four of them uh, the member type is a bus and its width is 4 of course that would be populated by default and then we do a OK and that comes in here then we add the P clock which is a scalar and we add it then similarly we do it for clock we do it for ready we do it for OSC and then another one we do it for reset once we are done with that we have set up the net group and in here we just hit OK and it says that once the net group is created then the design would be saved that is fine we just do an OK and in here right now you see that in your place net group you have a net group which is already created 
Now choose it. This is the net group that we are going to use. And if we hit OK, you would see that the cursor would change to being a crosshair. So we simply draw a net group which is close to here. And if you see, net groups are a little bit thicker than the normal bus and its color is also a little bit different. So now it is named as 8284 output signals, whatever you named it. And now it has automatically taken in the size, which is 0 to 8, because if you check, there are nine signals in all in this particular bus. Now, how do you connect pins to this particular, uh, to this particular uh, bus over here? The way that we can do this is same thing. We now do a uh, auto connect. And what we do is this, we auto connect and let's say for example we choose uh, D0, D1, D2 and D3 and try to connect it to this bus over here. Now we can expand this and actually select which of the lines go where. So either what we can do is, so let me show you that. Uh, one of the ways that we can do this is let's get rid of these and also get, let's get rid of these over here right now what we can do is we can do it one by one so let's say we chose uh, d1 and then we connected it to the bus and it will ask us which one do we want to connect this to within the uh, net group signal so we choose that this is d1 and okay so that would be named as such and so on and so forth right but instead what we can do is we can do it in a group as well and the way that we do it is like this we do away with this and then uh, do the auto connect to or rather auto connect to a bus and we select all of these and select the bus they are connected and now we select how we want to do it this is d3 2 1 and 0 and okay so we see that in order they have been named d0 d1 d2 d3 similarly if we want to connect these for example the reset to the bus and we select that this is the reset signal then if we want to connect the clock to this particular bus then correspondingly we select clock then if we want to do the p clock then the p clock goes in and gets connected Similarly, we do it for ready and OSC. So once we are done with that, and if you want to beautify this a little bit so that it is readable, what we can do is select all of these and then drag them so that they've got space and then put these names back on the wires over here so that they are uh, nicely put in and um, do not overlap with any of the other information that is there probably underneath it reset and then over here we have got D0, D1, D2 and D3 right so once we are done with that then again here also the same um, sort of like uh, rule works so so once we are done with that the same rule applies for net groups as well and that is we have to place a port that is going to take the net group out of this particular schematic design page and then the same port is going to be used somewhere else and the signals are going to be taken out of that so while putting a port for a net group there is an extra step involved so let's see what step that is so let us first start putting a port in here so since this has got data port as well as scalar signals we make it bidirectional so let's use that but notice this time around once you choose the kind of port that you would use you have to Keep in mind that you have the proper net group selected. So since in our design we just have one that is selected by default and check this box which is net group port. Once you are done with that go do an OK and then place it here. 
you would see that these ports look a little bit different and you can name it uh, whatever port both L let's change the name to something like 8284 sig out say for example simply sig because we have some bi-directional signals in there so let's do an OK and then we would need to join this together so let's put a bus entry and try to join it with another one of the net group signals um, let's try this so we have this thing joined here so we are done with this particular part now let's go over to the next the other page where we have to put something like this in so that would be the um, connector block or the output block so in here we have to again introduce a port this time this would be the port both right uh, belongs to the net group as in this one and this again is a net group port so let's put it in here uh, the name of course is going to change and that's going to be the one that we gave on the other sheet so 8284 sig the 0 to 8 would be there and do an OK once we are done with that same thing we put a bus entry connect it with the net group kind of wire and then do the same thing and drag this for a little while and put it there so now let's see what happens oh no in here this became a normal bus that's not correct so we would have to do this again choose the net group choose it and do a OK and then drag it again from down here and this time around we are fine now we have to join each of these pins to this bus so the way to do that is same thing auto connect to bus these four we connect to the data line so we can do it in one shot and we select which signals to assign these to D0 to D3 and they will get assigned directly these are the scalar lines and we do it one by one so the first one will go to P clock then the second one will connect to clock the third one will connect to ready the fourth one will connect to oscillator and then the last one is going to connect to the reset signal so with that we are done connecting we would remove the extra portion of the net group wire and with that we should be done once we are done with that we will need to go back up and see how we can propagate these changes into the hierarchical page so in the hierarchical page I have removed the previous port structures that we had because now we have a different sort of representation so we do the synchronize up for the clock IC and we see a signal that has come up there and then we do a synchronize up sorry I don't know what I did and where the signals went but let's see oops magnified zoom out yep so right and we do a synchronize up for this one as well and we get a port there so now we select these ports which are actually nothing but the um, net group signals that are here and now we need to connect them so the way that we do that is again using the net group select the particular net group we want to connect it with and OK and then from one part to the other one and you have a connection then we place it so that it comes out OK and there you have it this is your hierarchical block diagram in case you want to use net groups so with that we come to the end of the videos that are required for you guys to go uh, come up to speed with doing things with the schematics now for those of you who have already gone through the process of generating schematics which are not in this particular format 
go back to the second video which talks about setting the uh, pages and stuff as a schematic and then a page and you would be able to create folder structures like these and copy your design pages from here drag them into each one of these folders to create the structure so that you can easily go back and create the hierarchical block just remember that in case you are using a hierarchical block you won't be able to use off page connectors uh, because they will not appear as uh, ports on your hierarchical block so if you, a hierarchical block has to be placed then remember that you have to use the simple ports and with the simple ports also there are just two things to remember if you are using a plain bus then that is fine you know how to connect them if you are using net groups then do remember that when you are choosing the ports check that box which specifies that it's a net group block and then select the proper net group to associate that port with so that should be all that you need good luck